Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Live before your eyes, it's Aganis Arena, home to the Boston University Men's Hockey Terriers, the winners of five national championships, 14 Hockey East championships, and 30 Beanpot tournaments. Although the red, white uniforms will grace the ice today, may seem familiar to Boston University fans. They are not the jerseys of their beloved Terriers, and this is no Hockey East matchup. Instead, a focal game in the New England Prep Hockey Universe as the St. Paul School Pelicans and Thayer Academy Tigers travel to Boston to square off with some serious playoff implications on the line. The chatter has been going on for months now. It all starts with a sacrilegious whisper. How could somebody be talking about playoffs already is the typical response. That whisper, however, has grown into a roar and now rattles around off the roof and within the walls of almost every high school hockey rink in New England. Playoff time is near. With two weeks remaining in the prep hockey regular season, there are no two teams in a more thrilling playoff rush than Thayer and St. Paul's. The Tigers have never quite found their groove so far this season and have been up and down for much of the year with a record of 10, 9, and 4. Or sorry, with a record of 10-9-4, though, Tony Amante's team is not quite out of the bidding yet for a large school playoff spot, a tournament the Tigers reached the finals in last season, even taking the game to overtime before falling to Brunswick. With four games remaining in the schedule, not including this one, Thayer finds himself at 25th in the prep RPI ranks, two spots behind Hotchkiss, who, grabs the finals, who grasps at the final spot in the large school tournament. St. Paul's faces a battle of their own, currently number six in the tournament. The Big Red have split their last ten, going 5-5-0 five, five and oh in the span, and have not quite yet comfortably clinched. We are underway here at Agana Serena. So glad to have you along. My name's Ryan Murphy. St. Paul's in the white and red BU like uniform skating from right to left and Thayer in their Philadelphia Flyers-esque orange and white. They will be skating from left to right here between the blue lines. Moving ahead with it bobbling with Moran and he now skates through with a shot on the St. Paul's starting netminder Andy Barron who cobbles it up for the first save of the hockey game. So the question here today, who's will be going home with their playoff hopes in a bit of disrepair as the face off out to the left side. Down to our left, the Thayer starting netminder. Don't think I addressed him. It's Gavin Fitzpatrick. He's a junior out of Norwood, Mass. He's already played a thousand minutes so far this season as St. Paul's has iced the puck. That's more than he played all of last year and route to that large school championship game against Brunswick. We'll do this draw again, although over to the far side right now. Top line out there for Thayer. Centered in the middle by Riley Moran, and he wins the draw right on back. Reversed on the wall over there by Jake Flynn. Down low, it skipped off the stick of Mike Stenberg and out of the corner. Moran is working on on the far side. He's hammered by Eric Simpson and loose behind for Stenberg now. Stenberg, far corner. Dumas hustling over there. He's pulled into the wall by Moran. Thayer can't properly pull it to the middle and St. Paul's has it below their goal line. Bobbling with it is Simpson and now the Big Red will attempt their breakout. Stadheim will circle back around the left circle and go up the middle of the ice there. Across the blue line here comes Owen Stadheim cutting left around Bussy. He'll shoot it in off the stick of Fitzpatrick. Below the goal having a tap at it there with Sasha Telegren and Thayer will start from their own end here. Flynn rated right some trouble on the boards. This one goes high and out to center. Glove down to neutral territory there by Nolan Fitzpatrick and into the zone it goes. Barron out of the net to stop it. Some quick pressure there from Fitzpatrick, and he ties up. Looked like Julian Menes over there on the far side. Nope, that was Jake Sullivan, I apologize. There's Sackline pushing this puck out through center. Christian Hayes out around the goal. He's taken to the boards by Sackline, but moved it off quickly first. Mandian headed skip out over his stick, and then it does hit off the stick of Fitzpatrick in neutral territory. And then quick moving start to this one. 6.15 to go in the first period. And it's St. Paul's 0 and Thayer 0. Working in the far corner over there is Hayes up to the half wall. He goes down. Back in the line. It's Murphy with a shot. And it goes off the boards. Barron, I believe, had to make a save there. I wasn't looking. <laughs> Another one towards the net, blocked aside. And the rebound comes over this way for Cooper Flinton to clear the zone. There's Manny at center, the cross ice pass tipped into the middle, Thayer working in, here's Fitzpatrick, left it off for a shot there from wide out by Hayes, he got the rebound, trying to tuck it in on Barron, and he will do just that, but Andy there with the glove to make the first stop. So it might seem a bit quiet in the building right now, and it probably is, uh, not exactly the full house that they're used to here for the BU games, but... <laughs> 
But with a big building like this, it's actually good to crowd on hand. Here's a shot on goal and getting a tip at the side there was Matt Sullivan. The rebound comes loose to the wall. Good crowd on hand here, although the big building makes it not seem so. Here's Halliday trying to pull free. Back checking on him is Flynn. Halliday picks it up. JT Halliday back towards the middle. And it was gone. The pass was intended for Ben as it deflected it on goal for Fitzpatrick to steer away. Halliday wasn't really at a good angle to take the shot and was unable to get the pass off either, but a good chance for the freshman coming up and ahead there. Possible two-on-one that just never quite developed for St. Paul's. So he'll get an offensive zone face-off out of it, though. And that line of Schubert, Menes, and Halliday remains out there. Defensive pairing for the Big Red are McElhaney and Sweet. Schubert won the draw, but St. Paul's can't maintain possession. It's worked out of the zone. That's Sullivan on the far side. He takes a check from Menes, but the puck gets deep. McElhaney all tied up with C.J. Monturio in behind the big red goal. It'll be cleared up to the blue line by Halliday. One poke from Schubert, and they would have been in on a 2-1-1, -on -one, but he couldn't execute that. Now backtracking with it is Sweet. He had a bit of trouble, peels it away to the boards. Schubert, and then off the glass for McElhaney. They work it out to center, kicked out by Mena, so no icing on the play. It was waved off by the linesman below us as Jake Flynn curls and drags it before dropping it off to his defense partner. Walking out from the left circle area, that's Nolan Hayes, chased by Malcolm Bussey. Hayes through neutral territory, he'll just play it on goal. And that petition on Andy Barron is a no-go for him, swallowed up easily by the St. Paul's netminder. Hayes going from end to end there, he's a sophomore from Milton Mass. 14 points for the sophomore. I think I already mentioned that. <laughs> Sophomore Nolan Hayes. They are right back at it here. Tipped out of that dangerous area by Simpson. He's going to give chase all the way into the Thayer end. And he's going to get around Jack Murphy and go in behind the goal for it. Good forecheck there by Eric Simpson. Pinching down on the wall at Stadheim. Goal line. Bussy reverses one in front. And it goes right on the stick of Telegren. And he's going to skate up in a hand. Working on Russell. Good poke by the St. Paul's defender on the left side. That would be Bryson Russell. And Sasha Telegren had some momentum coming in. Bouncing puck to the right of the St. Paul's bench. Thayer can't set up their zone entry, and here's Mannion. He works back with it up the right side. Tipped off the stick of Mike Stenberg. <laughs> Sorry, that one was tough to speed up for some reason. So if you're wondering, uh, Stenberg listed on the roster as number 14. He's wearing number one out there right now, but he still has 14, the decal, on the back of his helmet. So I'm going to go with the story. I think he might have forgotten his jersey. It might be taking the goaltender, Connor Valios, his jersey, Velios, by the way, on the bench wearing Thayer's away white, so I guess that somewhat makes sense. It's my deduction there. Hard off the glass here. This should be icing and will be. Thirteen twenty-five on the clock here. The privilege to be up at the broadcast booth at BU. There's still some uh, remnants, some line charts and game notes from the game against UMass. Those are a quick shot off the draw and making the same as Fitzpatrick with the glove. I think that might have been Ty Green who pushed it in on goal. Uh, here's Flinton up there. He's forechecking right now with Christian Hayes. Kicks some snow up and moves it around. He's going to receive the pass over there on the far side and start in. Hayes picking up speed, trying to go around Harrison Sweet, stopping on the half wall. Back to the line for Nolan Hayes. Uh-oh, here's a turnover for Thayer, and it's going to be a two-on-one the other way. Cooper Flinton up on the left side, walking left. This puck comes back for Green. Kind of an awkwardly played two-on-one there with Sacklad. Clinton just couldn't get going, and then I guess the odd man rush was too widespread to create anything. Now they're going to give it a go. It's Sacklad with Clinton, and the shot goes off the stick of Nolan Hayes and out of play. So you'll be hearing a lot of Hayes tonight. Uh, Nolan and Christian senior and sophomore. I'm led to believe they're brothers, both from Milton, Mass. Christian, a Holy Cross commit. He's a forward wearing number 19. Nolan, a sophomore defender wearing number 12. We already talked about him just a bit. Menes throws a shoulder as Murphy loads and fires, and it was stopped by Andy Barron. He could see it all the way through. There was a bit of traffic in front, but it was off to his left and right, and he had a good lane to see the puck there, and swallows it up for a whistle. Murphy and his defensive partner Cam Mannion switching spots off that faceoff, which is won by Thayer. Trying to turn it towards the net there is Joe Bennett. That was a no-go. Stepped up was Monturio as it's sent deep by Thayer. Knocked in by Bennett as it was near the half wall. 
They are working around a deep. That's Riley Drew roughing up his man. That's Joe Bennett once more. Bennett, one of three eighth graders on this Thayer squad as Menez comes up and in. Julian Menez driving right through. What a stop by Fitzpatrick. The rebound there. Schubert was coming hard. And Gilvin Fitzpatrick follows up. That's a big save as Julian Menez was charging up at hand. The big St. Paul senior. Menez looking for his 15th goal of the season. He's got 20 points so far, and he just drove right around. I think that was Jack Murphy up on the left defense. <laughs> he just skated right around him. I mean, that is his defensive partner, Cam Mannion. Looking the puck once more is Nolan Hayes. They leave it at the blue line here. It's Riley Moran back for Hayes over this way. Flynn into the middle on his backhand, steering it towards it. And it's Telugu the rebound there. And a fantastic stop by Barron. He comes across and steals one from the Thayer Tigers with the right pad. Some fancy stick work by Culver. And St. Paul's has some space back out to center. That pass from Russell uh, couldn't connect with Culver, I guess. Kind of a just... A floater to nowhere, I guess, by Bryson. Uh, look at Flynn coming up ahead here. Flynn! And a stop by Barrett again. He got that one with the blocker. It'll kick loose to the far boards. Fitzpatrick in low. They are looking good here right now. 11 minutes to go in this first period, and we're still scoreless at Boston University. Score! <laughs> Sasha Telegwin and the Tigers are on the board first. It's 1-0. They are lodging a couple of good chances in a row. And that one probably, interestingly enough, the worst of them. As Telegwin just picks it up coming out of the corner of the left wall. And spins one towards the goal. He'll get that one, I believe, unassisted as well. And Thayer on the board first here. An important goal for the Tigers here at Aganis Arena. As they are looking to keep their playoff hopes alive, and no doubt this one would bolster that. Fitzpatrick coming in. They are looking for two now with it centered. Sharp angle shot here by Christian Hayes. Just above the goal line, and it steered over to the far boards. Stretch pass out to center. Here's Statheim right onto the stick of the Thayer defender. He was trying to catch Sinson in stride. St. Paul's trying to stretch the ice now, it looks like. And their passes are just missing by a little bit, and they're heading back into their own end. Trying to use the space out there on the ice right now. Maybe the space probably, there's probably less space than it looks. Just the big building has an effect on the way we see it from up here. It certainly looks like there's some space out there. Sullivan stepping up, laying a good hit there on Joe Bennett on the left side. Bennett now working in the corner on Jeome Deere in front of the John Hancock sign in front of the goalie gate. Comes down to the right post now. Ontario also in there. Simpson sneaks it out. Self pass to himself. He starts out to the blue line. Another stretcher up the left side. Here's Stadheim. Had a triple away from him. He's got a battle for it back now. It's over this way. Malcolm Buzzy coming in to help out. Three on two in favor of Thayer, though. Backing out of the pile, though, is Mannion. As it's dug free by the Tigers. They're going to ice this puck once more. So it, it just looks to me, at least, our teams are just missing by... A half step on some good connecting passes. <laughs> the building, I'm telling you, <laughs> definitely. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. It just, it's a, it's a different vibe, that's for sure. Manny on left side. Thayer's got to get a change, and Joe Bennett executes that well. Thayer scrambles as St. Paul's hustles out of their own end. The pass was picked off there. It was intended for Cooper Flint on the left side, but Nolan Hayes stepped up. Back for Hayes once more. He's now watched by Flint and tracking further. Hayes. Left side off the stick of Flynn and in. Off the stick of... Oh, wristed by Flynn. Off his Thayer. Stick in it, I should say. Get the proper sequential order. <laughs> Good win there by Ty Green along the boards. He's going to try to hit Flinton on the tip out, but it was Hayes who stood up on him. Nolan looking solid here on this first period. His team up 1-0 on the Sasha Telegrin goal. Telegrin's sixth of the season. He's a Northeastern commit, the sophomore is. Flynn smoked out quickly. A nice turn move around. John Sacklad it out to center of the Tigers. Dumas stepping up there on Sasha Telegrin and they are forced to loop back once more. Hayes over this way. Joe Schubert off the bench. That pass nicks off the stick of Jake Flynn. There's Hayes. He's directing traffic with his head there. He's had a little jerk motion to the left. I don't know if he's trying to 
get the right play going. Uh, there's him now. Here's Zach Laff stopping up. They'll change on defense. The Tigers will. Hayes down low. Hayes stepping towards the middle. He's between the hash marks on his backhand and just had to get away from him there. He wasn't strong enough to hold on to that one. On the backhand, of course. Howdy now busting into the zone on the free puck. JT Howdy trying to spin it around. Jack Murphy, sorry. Settled a bit on that one. Back out to center. Here comes Christian Hayes once more. Leaves it back for a drive. Loading it up there was Nolan Fitzpatrick. The two leading scorers for Thayer in combination there. Hayes with his 37 points, leaving it off to Fitzpatrick with his 20. And Barron is able to stop it with the glove. Tigers make some changes. Referee out at center is, uh... oh, St. Paul's was, was making a change and <laughs> referee wanted to make sure Levine and Drew either got off the ice or got off the ice. I don't know, they were making a later change and Opak in front here. Chance at the side of the goal, actually tied up in center for Sullivan. And he was all tied up. There was another chance over on the far post. I didn't catch the number on that one. St. Paul's changing on defense. In comes Monturio. Monturio with a shot. And that caught Barron up high. I think he might have steered that away with his mask. So Levine and Drew on the ice now. So they tried to change. And the referees were not going to let that happen. They changed now. I assure you. <laughs> I don't know who the defense pairing initially was. I'm going to say it might have been uh, McElhaney and Sweet. Maybe. Three off, three on for chair, or for there. <laughs> for there, not for chair. <laughs> they are changing, so if you want to combine the two words, sure, feel free to chair works. <laughs> Some late changes here with seven minutes and 13 seconds. Two go in the first period, and it's one nothing Tigers at Boston University's Aganis Arena. Off the stick of Sasha Teleguin, and he's got the goal to make the difference. Teleguin looking for this puck in the paint of the St. Paul's end. Kicked fruit loose there by Stenberg. Andy Barrett had it under his glove, though, and the referees blew, do blow the play dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shot right off the draw. So the top line out there for Thayer is uh, Moran, Stenberg, and Teleguin. And we'll get to Stenberg. I think he mentioned he's an eighth grader playing on this team right now and playing like a veteran. 5'10", 175. He went to the Silver Stick uh, 04 tournament in Port Huron and had a good showing there. No secret that uh, he's got some talent to be playing on the top line for the Thayer Academy Tigers. It's into the glove of Andy Barrett here. Nolan Fitzpatrick putting it off of the right wall. St. Paul still... Still trying to get something going. Only about three or four shots on goal thus far. And most of the play has been down to our right. Thayer up one nothing here. They're looking for another with... Hayes, I believe. Yes, it was Hayes sneaking into the back door. Knocked away from him, and here comes Flinton on the left side. Flinton in front of the net. They pass it there. It's going to come back for Cooper for Green. Now, what a little on time shot. And it just missed wide of the near post. Flinton gets it back, steers it in front. It's going to come back to Dion. Do a drive, three on for Sackle. It's a side. What a stop by Fitzpatrick. Still loose in the crease. The puck is there. And you see it kicking free. Bodies hitting the floor as Fitzpatrick was down. Ultimately, the referees lose sight of it, and that's why we have the whistle. <laughs> Just as I was saying, the Big Red have been unable to get something started. That line of Sacklad, Flinton, and Green goes down, and <laughs> they start something for the Big Red. We'll see if they can continue it. They remain out there as Thayer makes their changes. Going off for the Tigers are Glass and Fitzpatrick. In catch the left winger on that line. Yeah, not sure about that one anyway. Out to center, and Thayer moving quickly. It's Moran on the left side, self-pass. Moran busting in, and a stop by Barron. And a good job by Green to clear the rebound to the boards. Moran's right there, though. Cross-seam pass, left side, Teleguin with a shot. Rebound, score! <laughs> Two, nothing, Thayer, and it is Mike Stenberg. 
He picks up the loose change in front of Andy Barron and stuffs it home. Fair to St. Paul zero here at BU. Moran initially drove the net. That kind of got things started as the puck came free. Ty Green moves it over here to this, moves it over here this way. And it ended up right back in front of Andy Barron. The rebound was there loose on his left pad and stuffing it home is Mike Stenberg. It's his third goal of the season for his ninth point. The eighth grader out of Needham catches in and puts there up two to nothing here. A big goal. And the first one was a big one. The second one's an even bigger one to give the Tigers some breathing room in a hockey game they've got to win to keep their playing playoff hopes alive. St. Paul's takes their time out here, so you see them in the huddle below us. But a good start for the Tigers. You can't really ask for anything, or you can't really ask for much better if you're a Thayer fan. They have the game today, and then two more against Milton, one against Tabor, and then they finish the season versus St. Sebastian's on a 7 p.m. start time there. But this one big for the T-Cats, and of course, if St. Paul's in sixth, they're both competing, both teams are pretty much competing for the same three or four playoff spots. They're in the bottom of the large school, at least at the moment, St. Paul's obviously competing for something higher here in this one. They're down 2-0, though, and we'll need to get something started here for the next five minutes. Howdy's trying to do that. JT Howdy cuts right side. He'll push it in below the goal line. That's Joe Schubert roughed up. Still loose in behind, behind that fair net. Schubert doing some good work. He takes down glass to the ice. But the Tiger Cat or the Tigers, Tiger Cats, I guess, some, some, somewhat works. The Tigers move it out to center. <laughs> Hayes finds himself on his back end, skidding through, and he's lost his stick just yet getting out of the zone. He would have been offside as Fitzpatrick sends it in. They're onside now, and Hayes is up there watching Bryson Russell move it up the left side. Thayer is picking off that stretch pass, and Nolan Hayes jumps up from the blue line to do just that. We've seen him do that a couple times tonight, so we'll, it'll be interesting to see how that goes into St. Paul's game plan. Here's Dumont, little chopper. Gets by the glove of Monturio in across the blue line, but not for long. Working the other way is Sullivan on the right side. Here's Sullivan into the middle, backhander, and it just skipped over the stick of Monturio, who was coming in the left side. I think Dumas was on him, but he somehow snuck through. They are nearly making it three to nothing there as Halliday lifts this one up and out of play. Great chance for CJ Monterio coming in on that left side and maybe a fortuitous bounce for St. Paul's to keep this one a two goal hockey game. <laughs> Thayer makes changes. I, I, you can hear the refs down there. I think they're saying hustle off, hustle on. Teams really aren't doing that. There's a good stop by Baron. Sasha Teleguin was coming straight to the goal there once again. Bouncing up on the stick of Teleguin. He's going to try to settle at neutral territory. Howdy gives him a bump, and it's sent in by Schubert. Did not hit the stick of Mena, as an icing is going to be the call here. Someone, some stick slamming going on in front of the... St. Paul's bench, a little frustration it seems. Clock stops at exactly four minutes here in the first period. There to St. Paul's zero. Scramble off the draw to the left of Andy Barron, all tied up with Schubert and going to the goal. Here's Talaguin trying to drive it through. And Barron had to make a good save. That rebound came loose over towards his near post and headed right to the net was Stenberg. That line out there, the top line for Thayer is flying. Moran, Stenberg, and Telegwin. I don't know why this play was initially whistled dead. Schubert was in the box. He's going to step out of the box now. And he's going to head down the hallway. The referee gesturing below us, something like a hook. Explaining now to the St. Paul's bench, I'm not sure. This looks like it's going to be a major penalty, though, to Joe Schubert. And Mike Stoddard is going to hop off the bench to go serve it. As Schubert has gone down the hallway, we'll see if he returns at all in this hockey game. It couldn't have been something blatant because I missed it. Maybe there was some... 
verbiage or chatter coming from Schubert that's going to earn him a misconduct, I assume. There's only two minutes up on the board, but the referees are going to stop things before the play starts and maybe up that. So for whatever the reason, Joe Schubert has walked down the tunnel and they are up two to nothing. We'll have an extended power play. We'll see if it's a four or a five. And St. Paul's will be without their second center. Right off the draw, sent down by the big red. That's uh, Eric Simpson up there. That was an interesting, it looked like it was going all the way down the ice. It hit something and then ping pong right to Simpson. But yes, a five minute major for Schubert, which will carry over into the second period if will carry over to the second period unless Thayer scores two goals, which they have the time to do. Stepping in here is Hayes. It's laced in front of the net. Good job by Schubert to tie up his man in the... Or not Schubert. <laughs> Schubert's gone. Simpson to tie up his man, and the pass goes out the far side and clears the zone. Flynn right back in, though. The defenseman wheeling around. Here's Jake Flynn tracking in deep with some space. Comes out the far side, leaving it for Moran at the line. Due to D, this is Christian Hayes, top of the left circle. Up for a big drive. Coming through here by Flynn. Rebound slows in front. They try to, try to tuck it over here to Telegwin. Fitzpatrick was in front, trying to pass it to him. He had just had his stick all tied up. It's Christian Hayes once more along the goal line. Telegwin trying to sneak it on the near side. Barron was there holding the post. It's loose behind the goal. Comes out the far end. It's Telegwin back towards the middle. Right onto the stick of Eric Simpson. He's going to take it for a skate. Stadheim's up there with him. This is Simpson a shot right into the chest of Fitzpatrick. And he looked like he was going to play it, but a quick whistle there by the referee. And maybe a quick whistle that benefits St. Paul's as they will get an offensive zone draw here with 3.46 left to go in an early crucial kill. Usually they would have Joe Schubert sit in the box there to take his major. That's why I'm slightly interested to see if he's just gone from this game. Maybe he's gone to the dressing room for, for good. I don't know if they are changes up their power play unit though. If so, that would be a monstrous loss for St. Paul's. A big one for the Big Red. Zach Glass on the far wall. Up top now, here's Nolan Hayes walking it back to Glass as he moves towards the middle of the ice. Now on the goal line. Sharp angle shot. Loose puck in front. It's on the pad of Barron. And standing in front was Monterio. Once again, though, St. Paul's covering sticks. The pucks are getting to the net, but the defense for the Pelicans has those sticks tied up. Exhibit A is C.J. Monterio in front as he's inhibited from getting that loose puck on the pad of Andy Barron before he can get a glove on it, Barron can. That saves him a couple goals, I think. Saves St. Paul's a couple goals. <laughs> They've already, or Thayer's already pocketed two here in this first period and leading two to nothing at Boston University. This one a neutral site game. Dangerously towards the middle of the ice by Juma stepping up there as Murphy as it ping pong around. Murphy with a shot between the hash marks. And Barron swallows it up. He sees it. Air from that left hash mark. Looked like Murphy was in a passing position there as he hit the top of the circle and then kind of worked in further and decided to rip one in on goal. 2.47 left in the kill and a minute and 37. In the period, Thayer to St. Paul 0 in the first line or first unit back out there for the Tigers. There's Christian Hayes. That pass, I don't know if he was trying to go to Flynn and it got deflected. <laughs> If it didn't, that was a really bad pass there by Christian Hayes. <laughs> He's back on this puck here, wheeling around his own goal. We're about to hit the one-minute mark here in the first. Hayes stepping towards the middle of the ice. He's got space. Christian Hayes moving in and just missed the left side. Rebound off the glass. Clear to the line, but not at one. Show there by Hayes. Flynn, he's got the puck top of the key. One minute to go in the period and 210 in the kill. Hayes right circle. Flynn up top, walking and stepping with a shot. And it got deflected off a stick up towards the glass. Here's Riley Moran now for Jake Flynn. Back to Moran. Flynn once more, holding and winning. Green down to a knee. It's worked over for Hayes along the goal line. 42 seconds left to go in the period. Here's Flynn. Hayes. They are just waiting to get the perfect shot. There it is from Flynn. And it goes off the stick of Ty Green. And it's muscled out by Harrison Sweet down the ice. Good kill work by the Big Red. Keeping Thayer to the outside. And now a turnover by Fitzpatrick. Here's Seglan. A shot gloved out by Fitzpatrick. Looked like he was going to make a windmill stop. But it just got away from his glove. That's why we play on. 
Joining Seklot on the play was Stadheim. And here is Stadheim, who's stopped by Fitzpatrick. Oh, what a timely uh, moment for me to announce his entry to the play. He's on it again here. Three seconds to go, and there's going to be a penalty upcoming to there. One last shot from Simpson. It goes up and high and off the glass as you hear the horn here at Boston University sound. From again at Serena. It's 2-0 there, and there will be a penalty to the Tigers when we begin the second. So we'll begin with one minute and ten seconds of four-on-four -four time, and an abbreviated St. Paul's power play will get you all caught up there. But what you need to know is that it's Sasha Telegren and Mike Stenberg who have the goals for the Tigers. They lead St. Paul's 2-0 from BU. 